and a champion. Sydney Colson, in her senior year at Texas A&M, was out front in the Aggies' run to the 2011 national title. When you look at the national championship game against Notre Dame, I believe we were down four at halftime. I had a little speech with Danielle and Sydney before I would let ESPN in and anything. And Sydney had been a little careless with the ball in the first half, has already had three fouls. And I said, get the ball inside to Danielle. And I told Danielle, quit shooting threes. And she scored 22, 30 for the game. Sydney could find the people who needed the ball. Just like she did against uh, Baylor in the Elite Eight, she found her cohort, Sydney Carter, for 22 points in that ball game. The national champion is tied for being the winningest player in program history, amassing a 115 and 29 record during her time in the Maroon and White. Colson is still in A&M's top five in career assists and steals. She's all about the we. She's all about A&M. She's all about making everybody else around her better. And in life, whether you're in business, uh, whether you're a teacher, whether you're an athlete, can you make your teammates around you better? And that's what she believed in. She was the one stepping up, answering all the hard questions, making life better, standing up for what is right, not just for women's rights, but for what is right in this country. Sydney Colson is a winner. She put the ring on all of our hands and we're proud to welcome her into the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Famer was drafted to the New York Liberty with the 16th overall pick in 2011 and spent six seasons in the WNBA. She takes her place among Aggie greats tonight with induction into the Hall of Fame. Sydney Colson. Yeah. None of us, including me, ever do great things. <laughs> oh, Mother Teresa hadn't met me. And she didn't know I'd be getting her up into the whole thing. So, take that, Mother. I, I'm, I'm holding out hope that some people in the audience laugh right there. <laughs> but all jokes aside for a few seconds, I'm really, really touched by this moment. Last October, Coach Blair, Coach Vaughn, and Sid Carter had me get on a Zoom call with the team, thinking that I was going to give a speech, but obviously it was under false pretenses, and they proceeded to surprise me with this news. And I cried, obviously, uh, which is probably why I'm going to keep making jokes throughout to stop myself from crying again. It's always so strange to me to come back now to College Station because it's been 10 years since I graduated. 10 years since I was in good enough shape to make it through our torture sessions, I mean, I mean practices. 10 years since we hugged our amazing fans and boosters goodbye after celebrating our national championship back here in conversation. Um, and I mean, 10 years for the people who, who know me, like, can you believe I'm 32? Like, who okayed me becoming an adult? <laughs> wow. I love the time that I spent here. I cherish the relationships that were built. Um, we had so many managers over the course of my four years here, but always made it a point to know their names and to talk to them, to thank them, to thank them for little things because it's a really thankless job. And you know, to offer help when they seemed overwhelmed, but only sometimes, because they would get there like really early before practice and stay really late. And I mean, I'm not a superhero, right? I can't save everybody, you know? But no, really, I'm still friends with a lot of them. Uh, so that's one thing that, that I cherish. And our support staff was really amazing. Uh, they went above and beyond for us whenever we needed stuff, they were there. And they legitimately cared about us. And if they did it, if they did not, they faked it really well. And so to me, that's also commendable enough to make it in the speech. <laughs> Lastly, my teammates and my coaches, I mean, what can I say about them? already been said about Frosty Flakes. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, good. Yep. That was another joke to stop us off. Um, Coach Blair, Coach Barn, Coach Harris, and Coach Schaefer, 
you know, brought passion to coaching us. And they infused the right amount of tough love and kindness on the teams that I played for. And that's not to say that we liked them all the time because we definitely did not. Like we talked about them so much about them. But I mean, when you're a coach, when you're a leader, you know, it's not your job to be the player's friends. It's your job to prepare them for games and to prepare them for life. Um, actually, this is Leslie. I can and will not talk too much about my teammates because I'll lose it. They're my sisters. Um, we still keep in touch, you know, so they know I love them. I will say this though. I'm still playing basketball professionally, but it hasn't necessarily been the pro career that I envisioned for myself, even though I'm really grateful for it. Sometimes I wonder what would my pro career have been like had I chosen a university where I was a focal point and I scored this many points, got this many assists, got these accolades. And I stop myself from thinking that every time because I truly believe God's purpose for my life and alignment for my life had to involve these people and had to involve this place. Um, Coach Blair used to say to us before games, what I had I gave, what I kept I lost forever. And I'm so glad that I gave all that I had while I had it to these people, to this place. I'm deeply grateful for this moment. I'm grateful to the people who saw fit for me to be put into the Hall of Fame. And even more grateful that my family could be here to witness it. Aggieland will always hold a special place in my heart. And just really appreciate this. Thanks and giggle. Zoom call you referenced when, when the coaching staff and Coach Blair informed you of this induction. We got to watch it yesterday through social media. The, yeah. the women's basketball account put that out. Who was more emotional? You or Gary Blair? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Coach's voice was cracking in that. I mean, like, I'm an emotional person. So once his voice started cracking and his lips were quivering, I was just like, thanks, Coach. Yeah, then, then you couldn't hold it again. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sit tight. Okay. We'll continue the line of questioning here in just a moment. Right now, our next Hall of Fame inductee. 